Hi everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Another plant spotlight today and I would like to focus on this massive Cebu Blue Pothos right next to me over here. So let's get started. As always with my plant spotlights, first I want to show you the journey that the, the plant and I have been through together and then I'll share with you anything that I learned over the last uh, one, uh, one and a half years of growing this plant. So as I mentioned, I've been growing this plant for a year and a half now. Um, so I first got it in March 2021 and I'll put a photo up on screen of uh, what it looked like when I first got it. Normally with my plant spotlights, I'm pretty good at being able to give you a lot of photos to show the progression, almost the progression of this plant, almost like month by month. But when I was looking through my camera roll to find photos of this Epipremnum panatum Cebu Blue, I actually really struggled to find photos uh, before 2022. I know that I got it in March 2021 because I actually looked up the seller that I got it from and I uh, and I found like a, a photo in our DMs of when I first got it. So I know that I got this plant in March 2021 with just a couple of leaves um, and those leaves have now actually um, died off already. So I don't have the original leaves on here anymore. But there were two leaves and I mean you can tell by the photo they were decent size, so they weren't like a mature pothos by any means, but they also weren't as small of those, like a lot of the really, really small Cebu Blues you see sold everywhere. Now, I did get a second vine um, from a friend as well, and that was one of those really small ones, literally like the size of my my, uh, my pinky, uh, and that's growing on here too, and that's that, that vine over here kind of in the middle. So there's not just one on here, there's two different vines. They come from two different mother plants as well, so that's why they look a little bit different as well. Now, I also want to address that I do get a lot of comments about this plant uh, telling me that it's not a Cebu Blue, it's a Baltic Blue or s s whatever. Again, I say that pretty much in every video, I honestly do not care about the name of a plant. I like to look at a plant and if I like the look of it, then I'll, I'm, I'm more than happy to grow it. Now, I get it from, a, from, from your perspective. You want to know the exact name that this plant has so that you can go out and hunt for one that looks similar to that, right? But who says that the seller is naming the plant correctly in the first place? So I could be mislabeling my plant, the seller's mislabeling their plant, and you think you're getting the exact same one. Ultimately, unless you really do a DNA test, it's probably really hard to exactly identify what plant it is. Plants have natural variation, like humans do as well. We don't all look the same, you know, we all look different. Um, even if you have the same parents, like, look at your siblings, you probably look very different to your siblings. So I'm, not everybody, but sometimes there is natural variation. So just because a plant looks slightly different or has slightly different features, that doesn't mean that it's a completely different plant or a different form or a different cultivar. It could just be natural variation of a plant. It could be variation based on the conditions that it's grown in and so on. So for the sake of today's video, we're going to stick to the name Cebu Blue. And if you really disagree, look, leave me a comment and yeah, well, I'm not going to argue with anybody about it, but if you really feel like you need to make your opinion be heard, then just leave a comment and that's totally fine. So anyway, long backstory. So I've got it in March 2021, but unfortunately, I don't really have any other photos up until January 2022 of this plant. I know that it was just sitting in my kitchen and the kitchen is probably the one uh, room that I don't ever really take photos of as well. So I even scammed my whole camera roll to see if it's just hidden somewhere in the background, maybe. <laughs> and I honestly just couldn't find any photo. But I know for a fact that in March 2021, when I first got it, I just propagated it in water for a couple of weeks just until it got enough roots. And then I potted it up on a really small pole. So I had like a little, like a half pole left over. Don't ask why. I basically popped it on that half pole. And that pole is really just to over here, right? Because by the time you actually... I put it all the way to the bottom of the pot. So that, la that, that, that small pole that I initially gave, it really only went up to here. So I potted um, that, that cutting that I got in March 2021 on here. And then once it reached that, I ex extended it with a full moss pole. So the first full moss pole ends over here. Um, so over here. So I would have probably given that extension to that plant sometime in like November-ish um, of 2021. 
So you can see in January 2021, it was already on that extension and it was kind of climbing up that extension. And you can also see that um, the difference in those two vines that I had on there, right? So you can see there's one vine that is slightly larger. That's the one that I got as a already larger cutting in, um, in March 21. And then there's a smaller one and that's that smaller cutting I got from a friend. Um, and obviously the smaller the plant is when you start off with, the longer it will take to mature. Um, but you can see at that stage, they were still growing in kind of a similar speed. Obviously they don't grow the same size of leaf, but they're at least growing in a similar speed. And then I don't know what happened, but something like I kind of just really ignored this plant. Um, and you know, at that stage, I already had a lot of other plants that were really large and thriving. So it was just kind of sitting in the corner. It gets watered like once a week or so, but I didn't really pay too much attention to it. But something happened between January and March, I, I suppose we call it summer, um, that really made this uh, vine just go crazy. So it started creating these nice splits and these nice little um, holes. So it's called Apipremnum pinnatum. I believe the pinnatum is because it has these little pinhole, um, pinhole fenestrations near the midrib. Um, and then it also starts getting these splits, right? So that's when I suddenly started paying a little bit more attention to it. And that's where you suddenly have a little bit more photos. Um, that, that, that's where I started taking a few more photos that I can show you. So you can see by March 2022, it, it just started producing some really, really nice leaves. And obviously that would be because it's, it's summer over here in the Southern Hemisphere at that time of the year. So it would get plenty of light and would get warm temperatures, so everything that it really likes. I believe this plant is native to Southeast Asia and also the northern part of Australia. So it would be very tropical climate over there with high humidity, um, you know, warm temperatures and so on. I gave it an extension in May 2022. So this pole is now actually around about two meters tall. So a little bit taller than all the other ones because it's not just two poles, it's two poles and that little bit at the bottom, right? Which makes it a little bit more top heavy and unstable. So I'm pretty keen to give it a chop and extend soon and just bring it back to normal, normal height. But yeah, once it really established itself and started growing these nice large leaves, obviously the larger the leaves get, the more potential for photosynthesis the plant has, meaning it can produce more energy, meaning it can also grow faster, right? So one, kind of once it got past that establishment um, phase and it really started getting these larger leaves, it kind of just snowballs from there and then just keeps increasing. Hey Brad. Of course you need to continue giving it good light exposure and I was actually a bit afraid of winter might not giving it enough light but I moved it from my kitchen to my wall right behind me. So I did that in about June 20, uh, May or June 2022 moved it behind this wall. So over here, it gets light from this uh, northeast facing window. Keep in mind, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, so north is the good exposure with all the good light. Riddles, are we sharing my little stool? Okay. So it gets plenty of light, and especially during winter when the sun is quite low, being positioned right near the window over here, it actually gets a lot of uh, bright indirect light, but also a bit of direct morning sun as well. So it seems to be really happy, but obviously the leaves are slightly pointing to the right because the, the light source is kind of um, coming from the right hand side. Alrighty, so that's uh, um, also that second vine over here, you can really see that that first vine that has started producing larger leaves already is now really out racing that second vine on here. This vine has way more leaves, so it can produce more energy, so it can grow faster. But also because this vine is um, kind of being shaded by all these large leaves, um, I reckon this vine is actually just being stunted in growth a little bit. And that's what I find quite a bit when I have multiple vines on one pole. Usually one vine is thriving um, and the other ones are kind of just the supporting act, which is totally fine. All I really want to do is I just want to kind of hide the moss pollen itself, right? I mean, this is really the statement piece. And then the, this little secondary vine is kind of just trying to disguise the look of the moss pollen itself. Alrighty, that's pretty much all about the journey. And I definitely, I put a few photos um, on screen to show you, you know, a few, a few photos or videos that I took um, of this plant over the last few months. And it's definitely become one of my favorites. If you, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you can tell which plants are my favorites at the moment because I keep posting about the same plants. Um, 
Alrighty, um, it is almost reaching the top of its pulse, so it is due for an extension. Uh, so, so it's due for a chop and extend. Um, the other reason why I don't like this pole being that tall, besides the fact that you know I'm running risk of it actually falling over, is that you know I mean you can probably see it right now based on the light conditions. The top of like, within a, when you live in an apartment and you're relying on light coming from the windows, obviously, unless you have floor to ceiling windows, which I don't, I mean, you can see the top of the window on the right over here, which means that really the top bit of my wall, like the top, let's say half a meter or so, doesn't get that great light, right? The, the, the prime light exposure is really kind of in this middle realm over here, right? So as the plant grows taller and kind of grows out of that perfect spot of lighting, um, it's having a harder time to maintain the leaf size. So that's why I like to continuously chop and extend my plants as well, because once I chop it, I take the top part, I pot the top part back up, and then all of these leaves that are at the top over here right now that don't really get sufficient light are in that prime spot, and then they can continue to mature. If I had a, if you have skylights or if you don't have a ceiling, if you, so, I mean, I hope you have a ceiling. I suppose if you grow outdoors or if you grow in a greenhouse and so on, then obviously that wouldn't necessarily be an issue. But that's um, just another thing that I feel like I haven't really mentioned that much in my YouTube videos. Um, another reason why I like to keep my plants kind of at a, at a certain height at 180 or so, I, I feel like is the prime spot for me. It's, the, it's, it's like the sweet spot for me. Alrighty, so what have I learned about this plant over the last one and a half years? Honestly, it's not so fussy. I didn't really pay attention to it the first year, it, and it survived, right? Obviously, I watered it. I watered it approximately once a week, but obviously, it really depends on the conditions. If it's you know, if it's winter, if it's summer, if it's humid, if it's dry, and so on. It's an epipremnum, or you know, how commonly referred to as a pothos. So it is pretty pretty hardy, right? It's not a really tricky plant to take care of. But if you want it to mature, then you do need to provide it with more than just okay conditions, right? I mean, we can, we can talk about making a plant survive and continue growing, and we can make, talk about making a plant thrive. If you really want to bring out the best in your plant, then you can't go with okay conditions. You really try, you need to try and meet the conditions, or you need to try and create optimum conditions for it. So again, I'm pretty lucky because this plant is actually native to parts of Australia. Now, obviously, these parts of Australia are much more tropical than Sydney is. But over the last uh, at least one and a half years since I've had this plant, it's been raining so much in Sydney that it is actually super humid over here. And of course, I keep it indoors and indoors, it's always kind of warm. So it is fairly close to its tropical conditions so that it can still thrive despite being indoors. Now it's growing on a moss pole and I take some more close-ups because I acknowledge that you guys are really far away right now. It's really hard to get a monster like that in frame. Um, so I'll take some close-ups. Now this plant has rooted very, very well into that moss pole. There's roots all throughout the moss pole going into the pot. Again, it's, it's in a really small pot. It's only a 20 centimeter pot with my aeroid mix. So that aeroid mix is mainly bark, cocoa chips, pumice, perlite, a little bit of cocoa peat, a little bit of sand, a little bit of charcoal. Um, and it doesn't really need a much larger pod because most of the root system is contained within the moss pole in itself. I can also really pick up the plant by the pole and the pot just keeps attached because the roots are kind of just holding it all together. I then put the planter, the, the pot into a decorative planter. I feel like that's going to be out of frame for you guys, but it's in a heavy concrete planter. And that's really what stops it from falling over and gives it stability and stops it from being top heavy. One comment or comments that I get a lot about this plant when I post it on Instagram is that the color doesn't seem super blue. And, um, you know, first of all, whenever you take a photo for Instagram, just keep in mind that it just really captures one point in time and it captures one set of light lighting conditions, for example, right? Like, I mean, um, the classic Instagram versus reality moment, right? Just whatever you see on Instagram does not mean that that's what it looks like in reality. Cameras are really, really bad at actually picking up on proper proportions, picking up on proper light uh, and so on. So um, first of all, I think sometimes on the photos, depending on what light conditions are used to take these photos in, it might not look as silver as, um, as it does in reality. Um, but I also think that the, the leaves at the bottom definitely look a little bit more silver bluish than the ones at the top. 
I don't think it has something to do with maturity. I think it just has something to do with time, right? So as these leaves first unfurl, they're a little bit greener. You can see that um, this new leaf over here or this brand new leaf over here, they're a little bit greener. And then over time, they fade into a more silver bluish. But I definitely have to say that the juvenile leaves seem to be more intense in color than the mature leaves over here. Again, it could be something that has something to do with my overall conditions. Maybe I should give it more light to bring out more blue or silver color. And maybe it's just a natural variation of this particular plant that I've got. And it doesn't, it's never going to go super, super silver. It's definitely a difference to the normal epipremnum or this epipremnum uh, variegated. Over here, you can definitely see that it's much darker green in color. So I don't think it's a green form. It's definitely some form of silver blue. Again, let's not argue about names. Let's just appreciate the plant for what it looks like. The plant could not care less about its name. I fertilize it weekly, weekly using my regular GT foliage focus. So that is a plant nutrient that is readily absorbed, that can be absorbed readily by the plant. So I use that nutrient and I put it in the water that I use to water the moss pile. I don't ever really water the pot. What I do is I just take the water bottle, I flip it upside down on top of my moss pole and I just let gravity um, make all the water drain through the pole and then into the pot. And if there's any excess, I empty it out. I have a more in-depth tutorial on my aeroid mix, on my watering, on how I make my moss poles and so on as well. And it's all in the playlist, which I will link at the end screen. Now around conditions, as I said, it lives right behind me and I cannot con uh, control the conditions in this, in, in this living room. It's really the natural conditions that I've got, but we've been pretty lucky with humidity here in Sydney. So I think today, for example, it's about 70% of humidity in here without using any humidifier, without doing anything we've have, like while having the windows open, right? It's just 70% outside. So when I keep my windows open, it's going to be 70% 70% inside as well. Makes sense, right? But it can also go down to 30. Whee can also go down to 30, 40, 50% in humidity on a, in, during a dry week if it's nice and sunny and so on. Temperature wise, I live here and I don't really like my apartment going below 20 degrees Celsius. So I keep it around about 20 degrees. Obviously in summer, it can go up to, you know, 30-ish or so on. I do not use air conditioning, by the way. I just have windows that are open, really old school. If I'm hot, I open the windows and I close the blinds and so on. Um, so... I suppose air conditioning is something that plants usually don't appreciate too much. They usually like the warmer temperatures and they also don't like how air conditioning dries out the air. So, um, yeah, it's not like I have air conditioning and I don't use it. I just don't have air conditioning. <laughs> if I have, if I'd have it, I would probably use it, but I don't have it. And I'm not kind of planning on getting air conditioning because the plants uh, probably wouldn't really appreciate that anyway. Again, the light levels, as I said, it's right behind me. I don't measure my light conditions, but I can tell you that it definitely gets plenty of light. This window over here is unobstructed. And again, it's east north facing. So it gets the sunrise and then it gets kind of the morning sun. Um, and then it gets bright indirect sun throughout the day. I think that's really all I've got to say about this plant. I mean, my, gro my growth approach is not unique to this plant. I use the same growth approach for um, or the growth methods for pretty much all of my plants that you see behind me or that I've done previous um, plant spotlights on as well so it's not like i've done anything unique to this plant because it's a zebra blue pothos i just did the same thing and it just happened to work with the zebra blue pothos so just keep that in mind so i suppose overall really what i like about this plant and why i wanted to put a spotlight on this plant is because i think it's a plant that's very underrated a lot of people refer to, or when a lot of people when they think of zebra blue they think of the small little plants that are kind of like trailing down in like a pot you know they don't really think of Cebu blue as this fenestrating monster right next to me so i really wanted to point out what a Cebu blue can mature into when you give it the ability to climb you give it enough light you give it food thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope i motivated you to take a Cebu blue pothos pop it on a moss pole and try and grow it to maturity feel free to like and subscribe i really appreciate it and happy growing Take care.